Hello, Internet, and welcome to it Unmotivated. Oh, boy, I messed that up almost immediately. Welcome to Unmotivated Gamers, or welcome back to Unmotivated Gamers. If you've checked out any of my stuff, then you know that this is a show about nothing. It's a, a silly little project that I am doing where an old man basically plays some old school video games. If it's not clearly evident, the game I'm just starting right now is The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, and I am playing the HD version. As with my previous run of Ocarina of Time, which I finished, I may or may not be doing the a full run through. I thought about this a little ahead of time. I'm doing Lay Chuck in honor of the release of the Monkey Island game that came out. My wonderful wife was just playing through this game. She really likes this one. LeChuck is one of her most used gamer tags, so I'm going to be naming myself LeChuck uh, in, yeah, basically honor of that kind of playthrough here. But really, further ado, I'm going to just kind of jump right into, into this run. There was one thing I wanted to quote when I was doing the last playthrough. My wonderful wife came in and during one of the recordings. This is a long intro. I'm sure most of you are probably familiar with this. If you got a little backstory here, feel free to read it uh, if you'd like to. She came in at the end of one of my recordings, and the quote that I wrote down because I, I got a kick out of it was <clears throat> I like that you are now getting into making YouTube videos 10 years late to the party, playing a 30 year old video game using out of date memes. All I have to say is jokes on her at this point, because now I'm playing a 20-year-old video game at this point. That being said, I gotta say, this is arguably my favorite Zelda game of all time. I know it's a little bit split, according to the internet, on whether this is the greatest or the worst out of all of them. I'm getting a huge blast of nostalgia even just listening to this intro, watching this kind of story go through. I had debated on whether I was going to be doing the Ocarina of Time randomizer run. Um, ultimately, I decided to go with Wind Waker. Um, I don't really have a, a, a really good reason to, just kind of just thought about it and had the patience, etc. to go through this game and um, probably do a randomizer run at some point down the line, but it's just kind of, again, I looked at what was in my heart, and the Wind Waker is what was calling out to me. As I said, this game is extremely nostalgic. I've beaten this game exactly three times. I beat it the original time on the GameCube when it first came out. I did a second playthrough almost immediately when I kind of found out that there was, like, quote-unquote extra stuff, basically beating it with some of the, the little post-game stuff, the extra uniform, or, you know, the... I forget what the, the outfit is called. But, uh, you know, like his normal outfit at the beginning of the game. And then I beat it again when this HD game originally was released on the, the Wii U. Now, we have a, a lot of traveling in this game. I remember bits and pieces, not a whole lot. I can say that if you were familiar with, if, if you happen to watch my Ocarina of Time playthrough, first of all, thank you very much. Second of all, you probably noticed it was a bit meandering, and that was a game that I knew very well. I know this game significantly less well than I know that other game. So this will be interesting. Interesting to me, for sure. Interesting for anybody that may be uh, watching, because, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm not quite as familiar with the playthrough of this one where everything is as I am with the, the last one that I did. Uh, this is the end of the... getting towards the end of this intro here, which again, I'm sure most anybody who would be watching this is probably familiar with. I bet most people who watch this have probably played this game before, but essentially it recaps the story of the Ocarina of Time and explains how the world is now covered in ocean, and uh, people are kind of waiting for this hero to come and save them from great evil that's poking its ugly head out of the, the cracks of wherever it's hiding.
this game still looks incredible. I say still, I guess it's relatively new. I think the HD version, if I remember correctly, was released in... 2013-ish? I can't say exactly for sure on that one. I did do a little bit of research into this game, looking at what people have said about it. And I can say that the original version on the GameCube... Hold on, I wrote this down. The GameCube version released in December of 2002 in Japan and in North America uh, in March of 2003, and then in Europe, May of 2003. Oh, and I actually wrote down here the HD version released in September 2013 on the Wii. It's my favorite spot to call it Errol's Lookout. So, do you remember what date is today? Oh, man. Half asleep. That's... That's not the look of somebody who's half asleep. That's a wake and bake kind of look. Not that I would know anything about waking and baking. Wink. Okay, uh, go. As I said, I know even less about this game than I do of the other one, and that includes any speedrunning thing, so apologies to anybody who enjoys speedrunning. This is not going to be that. I was probably... I say probably. I was definitely... I was... 12... 13, 12 and a half, 13 years old when this game came out, and I've got a lot of special nostalgia for it because I actually played this game with my grandmother, may she rest in peace, um, prior to her obviously passing away, and um, really enjoyed having her watch me, watch me play this game. Here, that smile is wonderful. That frown is also kind of wonderful. So it'd be men taught the ways of the sword, enemies, gotcha. Orca is the only one who knows anything about swordplay. And then the shield, okay. It's not a bad outfit, to be honest. I'm, I'm kind of about it. Whole town, all right. Party, party at LeChuck's house. Thanks, Grandma. Okay. Okay, let's see. Sorry, it's gonna take me a second. A little... My muscle memory is non-existent on this game, so it's gonna be some growing pains all around. Thanks, old man. So, what I do remember from this game is that the, you need rubies for all, all sorts of stuff. Uh, I think I've got some of the broad strokes more or less down, major items, major islands that I need to, to go to. It's a lot of the little stuff that I know it's going to be a little bit of more meandering than... I would say less than expert level. Full disclosure, I did do this kind of beginning part as I was doing my test recording, so I'm a little bit solid on... I, I say a little bit, as if, you know. Anyway, I'm sort of solid. I have a pretty good idea of what to do, uh, uh, basically up through the Forsaken Fortress, um, getting to the Forsaken Fortress. Which is my goal. Hopefully I can get at least that far in this particular session. Telescope! Thank you! Thank you! I do like it. There we go. Hello, Mr. Postman. Please don't mind the, the creeper spying on you. 
anything up. What is going on over here? That's cool. When this game was released, there was definitely a split kind of decision on, or split opinion on basically the, the graphics, right? Because it's very cartoonish. It's done as a result of cell shading that ultimately took advantage of the, the GameCube's next generation console. Game, you know, next generation at the time. Because they were just coming off of the, the Nintendo 64, right? When they kind of a, this was the game right after I think Majora's Mask. Uh, from what I read, they actually started development actually on this game before Majora's Mask had even been released, and I found it to be pretty interesting, but they actually had like a demo release that was uh, completely different, um, kind of a different graphics that they used, and actually I think it was like at Space something, Space World, um, that they had, uh, sorry, I'm trying to focus, and still not any good at talking while I'm playing at the same time. Anyway, so they had like a demo where the, the graphics were going to be in one specific way. And you can actually find that demo on YouTube if you just Google Nintendo Zelda Space World 2000. And uh, it's like a tiny, literally like a two second demo um, of Link and Ganondorf. Um, so people were kind of expecting the Zelda game after Majora's Mask to look like that and uh ultimately they kind of decided during production that that they wanted to go in another direction and uh ended up with oh boy i uh, ended up using this yeah the cell shading which gave it this uh cartoon, um, cartoon, cartoonish look This uh, that we kind of see here. Um, and people were not happy about it. People wanted the more kind of realistic uh, look that they had originally uh, done. I am definitely in the camp that says that this was a great call. I think this, that it's stylistically, it works extremely well. And I think it's aged a lot better than a lot of other Zelda games because it has that like a specific style that um, just kind of works for for some of the technology that they used to do it, but, but you know, it really works um, beyond that because it's stuck to that style, you know. Um, now, given this is the, the HD version, so obviously they upscaled it a little bit and touched it up. Um, but even the uh, the actual GameCube version still looks pretty pretty decent, all things all things considered. I don't have an example. If I, hey, future me who's editing this, um, find a screenshot somewhere, post it right here. And hopefully I'm not proved wrong that uh, you yeah, have the uh, GameCube version actually looks uh, pretty decent, all things, uh, all things considered. Um, and yeah, I think that really is attributed to the fact that it did go through like a specific kind of uh, you know, um, style. It was stylistic choice to make it this way, as opposed to Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask, which I guess like does have a style, its own style, but is really um, limited by the you know the polygon textures of of their time. I'm not gonna lie. I I completely <laughs> forgot what my point was right there. I'm sorry to sort of rambling here a little bit. Hopefully it wasn't too bad. Going into the forest. Oh, there she is. Oh, I love that dagger. That's a that's cool looking hilt. Let's 
see, see the enemy over there. I don't think they really drop much, if anything. I wonder what that big rock is. Fairy fountain! <laughs> it's, that was exactly... Again, I, I kind of knew there was the fairy fountain, at least right now, because I've done this before, but that was exactly my thought process. I was like, what what is that? And <laughs> it just got that giant sign with the the marks there. I make myself laugh. Really dig in the music. It's setting the mood very, very well. Giant bird came and. Oi! Is that chest hair or a tattoo? I don't want to know. You know what? I, I really don't want to know. What about this boy? Don't worry. Don't just don't worry about it. Hoy. They just let kids go across this bridge. Then Link did something both very brave and very stupid. Stupid kid. That is the appropriate response, Tetra. He's not really a thinker, is he? Pirates. Oh, thanks, mailman. Here are many things. Haven't heard a word. Regions of the Great Sea. Young girls. I do. I, I'm enjoying the fact that the mailman is blackmailing pirates into basically getting them to do what what Link wants at this point. Can that both you and LeChuck? Besides, LeChuck is a pirate, so, you know, they should just take him, take LeChuck along anyways. LeChuck's a good pirate, too. I don't actually know if that's true or not. The only knowledge I really have from the Monkey Island series is the main guy is called, I think, Guybrush Threepwood. The game's a point-and-click adventure style, and Le one of LeChuck's weaknesses is root beer. And that's more or less it off the top of my head. Grandma! Oh yeah, she's, she's definitely still out there. That is what I am looking for, Grandma. Sounds like you used by the 
legendary hero himself. Ooh, this music's sad. I do not like it. Okay, bye! <laughs> bye, Grandma! Feel better! I don't really think there's really much else I can do at this point. Oh, is this the intro? Okay, so far be it for me to tell pirates what they're doing, right or wrong. Personally, if I were a pirate, I probably wouldn't use a gong to announce anything leaving or arriving. Ugh, that's not so gross. lady. Well, excuse me, princess. I have a little bit of nostalgia. You can't just sit around deck. You'll get in everyone's way. Nico. Okay, go talk to Nico. I don't know actually if back walking is faster in this game. Jump up on the platforms, press the button to get the platforms raised, jump up on them, gotcha. What a leap. One year before you're good to make it all the way here. Okay, well, I'll do my best, Nico. Okay. I'm gonna try to do this like a cool person. Thought I wasn't gonna make it. Nice. All right, first try. This is something new for any of you unmotivated gamer veterans. I did it on the first try. It's a new experience. I don't know how to how to react to this. In case you were <laughs> curious, what I did the test recording. It took me three three tries to get it set. So. You know, make up that what you will. Thanks, Nico. Ah! 
Ooh. Ooh, did I hear a root beat? Oh, I did. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> That's probably my favorite pirate. Definitely my favorite pirate voice. Climbing, 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 climbing. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Nico and I are cool. The seagulls. This scene right here is one that's locked firmly in my memory. The catapult and Link's face as he's loaded up is, is the best. He starts freaking out like he wasn't just, like cool being put in there in the first place. Piece of cake. That face. <laughs> Bye. All right, I have to do my best attempt at being Solid Snake. Hope I don't end up being like Gumby and Pokey instead. What's the opposite of a pickpocket? Is it still a pickpocket if they're leaving stuff in your pocket without you noticing? I'm sure there's a fast way to do this, but I don't know what it is. I'm just gonna go for them roops. Definitely don't notice the barrel. Okay. So... I'm not entirely sure what the path is exactly. I seem to remember getting caught was a good choice. I mean, maybe I'm just remembering that wrong because I got caught. So, of course, I'd say, you know, getting caught, of course. Yeah, that's that's the best choice for sure. Unless I don't get caught, in which case not getting caught was definitely the right choice. Oh, am I going up that the wrong way? Sure am. Oh, LeChuck, you silly goose. This feels right. Look at you go, look at you go. 
Ah, uh, the first long chest. want to come up here. I don't want to talk to you right now, Tetra. Oh, that didn't do anything. You obviously see that, dear viewer. Oh. Bonk. Bonk. I will take that. Okay. Um, the one I definitely need to get is that one over there. Oh, and there's the ladder. Okay, good. Can I just hop down, like, on that? What do you want, Tetra? When they were doing the, the press for this game, that was one of their... The things that I felt like they, I remember them like pushing was being able to use the enemy weapons. I guess I can't quite make that. That's okay. Um, and yeah, I, I, I thought that was like the coolest thing, right? Because I think really the only thing, the only thing that was like close to that in a Zelda game was Deku sticks, really. Um, which obviously is not the same as actually picking up a, an enemy's weapon and killing them with it. So I'm pretty sure I just need to worry about this particular spotlight that's actually pointing up at the the window. And I'm, the other one's not pointed in a path that I need to worry about, I don't think. I fear my skill with the wooden bat. Yeah, okay. Which way did I come up? Oh yeah, ladder. Ooh, thunk. If you feel the tension, but I, I feel a lot of tension right now. Trying to make sure I, I'm getting uh hitting that that rope swing in the right way. I actually started sweating a little bit. It's getting warm. Ooh, just rolled my way off the edge. Get away from me, rat. Do not want. Do not want. Come on, turn around, pig man. I don't want to deal with that rat. Oh, man. Will he just find me if I am in the middle of his path? <laughs> I 
Oh, he just kind of turned around. How interesting. That was very stressful. I'm not going to lie. That was really, really incredibly stressful. Don't mind the barrel. I said don't mind the barrel. Rid it did 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 you. Bye. Bye. Okay. go side on my way across this ledge riveting gameplay gotta say it right here this is a plus gameplay I don't I don't mind it actually they could have made it go maybe a little bit faster but it's something different now if they decided to make this mechanic right here, the sidestepping into a whole mechanic, into a game of itself. Maybe if you make yourself paper thin and go into cracks. Now that's a game I would and have played. I did really like Link Between Worlds. Excellent way to do a reboot, sequel, however you want to think about it. Back in business. Here we go. Oh, you going for your weapon? I think not. Now we go into... I think a cutscene, right? Pretty long one. I'm gonna get some water while this one starts. Make sure you drink water, everybody. Really, really loving the full scoring that they did for all of these cutscenes, just the music in general. Nice little teaser for the big boss. I think it's pretty clear who that is. Who is that? Okay, bye! See you in three bosses! I guess, really, like two, two bosses. Two and a half bosses. Two questions. Where did I land? How did the boat find me? Pull yourself together, like Chuck. <laughs> Ooh. 
surprisingly dull with it. it. Nailed it. As wide as the world is, I'm the only boat who speaks the words of men. King of Red Lions. Ganon, huh? world's being threatened by his evil magic. Of course I do. Of course I will. Link's whole thing, boat. Jeez, man, this guy's throwing some shade my way. Little strength. Your, your boat. Let's talk about strength. Sorry, let me rephrase that. You're a boat. I don't know how much I want to take opinions on strength from a boat. Find a sail. Got it. Information you provide may come in handy during your endeavors at sea. So listen to the words and heed them well. There is no time to play. Come back here immediately as soon as your errands are done. Got it. Don't goof around. Except what's absolutely necessary. Okay, we are here on the island. I think with that being done, yeah, I think that'll be it for, for this session. I'm pretty stoked about this second game going through here. If somebody else is listening to this, thank you so much. Thanks for checking out this video. Check out some of my other stuff if you, if you want to. If it's just me, watching this as I'm editing this. Hey, future future LeChuck, uh, I hope you're you're doing well. Hope you you were able to relax today. Do something do something cool for for the, for the both of us. Something to look forward for the past LeChuck to, to look forward to. Thanks everybody. I'll see you on the next episode. Bye. If you're hearing this, I've actually posted this somewhere and you well, you either watch it or you skip to the very end. Either way, thank you so much for listening to this. Hopefully you watched the video. If you liked this silly little video, check out some of my other videos, which are equally silly and possibly less entertaining, more entertaining. I don't know. That's kind of really for you to decide. I definitely enjoy making them, so check them out if you, you want to. And if you don't want to, that's cool too. Have a great day either way. Thanks, everybody.